guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to give an email that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy. He is 33 years old, and he's sharing his story about an experience he went through about five years ago when he was 27, dealing with a friend and co-worker. A friend and co-worker who was married to a effinist woman. And all the turmoil and BS this guy was dealing with and how her BS was impacting their social group. And you're going to see here, guys, that, uh, you know, nowadays in the Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0 world, your typical uh, run-of-the-mill effinist can't be the empowered type, as they like to go by, unless usually they want to have something like an open relationship, open marriage. And you're going to see here in this story, to no surprise, this guy's, his friend's uh, wife, wanted to have just that. And then obviously the turmoil and things that are going to come about from that. Now here's the thing. This guy's sharing the story. He's married as well. He's married right now. And unlike most emails I get, this guy is actually happily married. Imagine that. And his wife is a very traditional feminine woman. She's a stay-at-home mom, raises the kids, very supportive, very loyal, and he's very happy with her. And and I and you know what? I'm really happy for him. It sounds like a situation that most guys that do want to get married would love to have. And so I think that's great for him and I really hope, you know, this continues. But you're going to see here the clash between his household, his marriage where it's traditional and all that versus this guy he's friends with who's married to the effinist, the empowered woman and the clash the clash between the women and all that. And so this is pretty interesting to see how it goes and to show you how there's no wonder we are in the way things are right now at the times thanks thanks to the effinist movement and the impact it's had, the negative impact it's had on marriages and relationships and all that. The traditional way of doing things and the new way of doing things. And also ultimately with the whole open marriage thing, which never works out. So I'm getting into this. He says, uh, hey, SSM. I'm a casual view of your content over the past year, and I want to thank you for keeping up the good fight. I have a story for you that is a bit different than your usual, and wanted to hear your take on it. This is how my marriage ended up destroying my friend's marriage while I tried to help him out. Well, brother, I'm happy to help, and you know what? Your marriage, for what it sounds like, it's a pretty good deal, so I'm happy for you. And believe me, this guy, I know how this story ends, you helped him. In the long run, you helped him. Uh, for clarity and context purposes, I will tell you a bit about myself first and then what happened to my friend. At the time of writing this, I am one of the few who has beaten the odds so far. My wife and I are high school sweethearts who got married right out of the gate. Whew. One of those, huh? If you guys are still together and you're happy and she's truly, you know, uh, loyal and supportive, I'm happy for you, man, but... You definitely took a major chance doing that outside of high school. I like to know where you're from. You must maybe you're from a small town, it's definitely away from the big city. I don't know because th this is just this doesn't happen very often. Let me put it that way. Anyhow, he says I rolled the dice and jumped in head first. Then, like an idiot, I rolled the dice a second time by joining the Marines right after that. We made it through, but watched so many around us fall apart. How many stories have I done? How many videos have I done about guys that got married right out of high school, then enlisted in the Army or the Marines or, or joined the Navy or whatever, and literally the second they're deployed and the wives are waving goodbye, they're off to the bars hooking up with Chad and Tyrone. But, and he obviously said he saw a lot of marriages fall apart. But somehow this guy, it works. So, again, I'm, very, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that is how you think it is, and it probably is. So I wish you the best. Anyhow, afterwards, I spent the next five years of me being a full-time dad, full-time husband, full-time worker, and full-time student while my wife was a stay-at-home mom, as we had agreed, and a college student. We got our bachelor degrees with no debt, and I finally got a job in the field I wanted. At the age of 27, I felt like I was finally at the starting point of my life. Today, at age 32, my gut has not given me any bad feelings, but listening to content like yours has had me keep an eye out at the least. Yes, bro, you definitely always have to keep your eyes open and watch out for the red flags. I'm great. I'm really happy to hear things are going well this thus far, but you always got to keep your eyes open. That's, it is what it is. 
and you got to stay strong and you got to be the leader in the relationship and, and in the marriage and you're a marine so you're naturally a badass so this should this should not be too difficult for you don't put her on a pedestal don't kiss her butt i mean you can be good to her as long as she's good to you but you know you've been with her for a long time you know her but always pay attention anyhow he says now back to when i was 27 this is when i met carl this is not his real name, but Carl, 23, was a co-worker who had the most likely to go postal kind of demeanor. Well, when you see who he's married to, you can see why he has the, the most likely to go postal demeanor. We had nothing to do with each other until one day he overheard me talking about being married right out of high school. This prompted him to jump into the conversation and begin asking me questions. Come to find out, he too had married right out of high school and wanted to know how I made it last this long. I never met anyone else who had rolled the dice and figured I would help him out. Over the next few months, Carl started uh, participating in conversations with us and often had questions for me about marriage. I found it odd that he had so many questions seeing as how he'd been married for five years by this point. And obviously, Carl's probably not very happy with his marriage, and you're going to see why. Remember, guys, right now we have, you're hearing from this dude who's telling the story, and he has the traditional marriage. One that actually seems to be working for him and he's happy with, which is cool. Good for him. Now we're going to see the guy who's married to the modern woman, the modern empowered woman. At about the six-month mark, I had my first house with uh, land and invited the co-workers with their families to our house for an open, house opening barbecue. More people than I thought showed up, so I pulled out my fire pit and eight square foot of cooking space and began cooking as the guys started inspecting the house. The kids were playing out back, us guys drinking beer around the pit, and the ladies were in the kitchen or the dining room. This is such a stereotypical situation. I've been to so many barbecues and parties, and it's always the same thing. The dudes are around the grill or the fire pit with the beers and junk food. The kids are out in the swing set, running around, raising hell, playing. And all the women are congregated inside, and I've literally seen them having Tupperware parties. It's hilarious. It's like out of a freaking movie. Um... It had gotten late with a few of us left hanging around when some of the wives came out and handed us some more beer. A few minutes later, we heard some arguing come from inside the house, so I went in to see what was going on. My wife was yelling at Carl's wife. As it turns out, Carl's wife, Anna, was an outspoken, wait for it, feminist, who was talking shit about the wives that brought us more beer. My wife, being a stay-at-home mom, shot back at her until we called the barbecue done. Okay, now we're introducing Anna, Carl's wife, the effinist. Invited to somebody else's house, and she's starting shit about the wives bringing their husband some beers. No big deal, but to someone like that, and she's obviously young, I might add, this is just a, a horrible thing. No empowered woman would ever dare bring their guy beer. He would have to go get it himself. Or better yet, bring her some box wine or whatever the hell she drank. She's going to somebody else's house and starting a fight. You want to talk about disrespect? I would have thrown her ass out of there and kept up with the party. They're having a good time. This is showing you this girl's personality. Any of you guys that have unfortunately been around any effinists can probably recognize some uh, similar signs here. Similar traits. It took about a week before Carl started talking to any of us again. I answered Carl's questions the best I could, but I knew that most of my advice was useless on a wife like his. I decided to take him to my kickboxing slash Krav Maga class as a guest to get him out there and do some uh, something proactive. It did not take long for Anna to start coming to our classes as well. Of course she wanted to go as well, because you can't be a strong, empowered woman and have your man over at uh, t training in martial arts. She's got to come too. Got to do it for the sisterhood. I did martial arts for six years. I did the exact same thing this guy did. Krav Maga and Muay Thai kickboxing, which are badass. And I highly recommend you guys give those a shot if you want to try martial arts. Amazing workout. Great skills. And there was a majority of guys in there, but there were also women. And by and large, most of the women were more, how shall I say, in touch with their masculine side. Very rarely would you have very feminine girls in there. You had a couple, and they usually came along with their boyfriends or husbands to them to learn some basic skills to protect themselves. So it's not a surprise to me that this uh, empowered effinist type wanted to go to Krav Maga. 
Anyhow, he says, Anna is an above-average-looking, gym-going, healthy-eating type of college girl with three bachelor's degrees. Of course she has three bachelor's degrees. Who found out all, found out all her working out meant nothing. These classes don't usually have many people and even less women. So my wife got to put her hands on Anna often. I usually pair with my wife when I could. Only do this if you're 100% sure your girl is comfortable. But Anna was likely paired with another one other than Carl. In martial arts, for those of you who never took it, you have a, usually have a training partner for the evening. You pick and choose. And you work on the various techniques, whether you're getting some like somebody say you're practicing bear hugs somebody puts you in a bear hug your partner puts you in a bear puts you in a bear hug and you get out of it and take them down that type of thing or boxing training or or they're holding the mitts while you're punching them or they're holding the big pad while you're kicking it at ground defense all sorts of stuff you have your training partner for the evening and so a lot of times you can have generally people the same size working with each other but it can be mixed up guys and gals older and younger tall and short it's always good to train with somebody different to Get used to different types of energies and because it's, it's always different. And for you guys that train martial arts, you know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, one day I was paired with Anna and I made her actually work for it instead of just lip wristing it. And it started to get easier to hang out around her from there. Well, she probably was in her element because she wanted to like prove how strong she was. And believe me, I've seen these types. Fast forward a few months and things were looking to be okay. Carl was even telling me how Anna was actually looking forward to hanging out or going to class. I learned a lot about Carl, Anna, and their marriage over those months, but most importantly was the day I found the missing piece of the puzzle. And this is where it gets interesting, guys. During one of our martial arts classes, I was paired with Anna when she, she was talking about their marriage. She shouldn't be talking about their marriage with you or anybody else. That's the private business. Unless something's going on. She told me that around or right before I got hired, she had told Carl that she wanted to have an, wait for it, open marriage. This is communicating, I want you. That's what's going on here. Because she wouldn't be bringing this up otherwise. Carl had refused. It all clicked instantly. I now knew why Carl's questions always to cut, seemed, to cut, cut, seemed off to me. She said she thought he was about to okay the idea when he started to act differently all of a sudden, small things that made, me, made her think he was changing. Now she wanted me to convince Carl to okay the open marriage. Said it would be better for everyone if I did. See? Welcome to 2021. You're not an empowered gal unless you can get your guy to agree to an open marriage, open relationship. If you feel the need to have the open marriage, open relationship, you shouldn't be married to begin with. Now, if they're 23 years old, and they are married, obviously she got married young. Maybe she didn't have a whole lot of experience. So this goes to show you the idea that some people think that, okay, if you marry the girl really young and either she's the virgin or maybe only a couple partners, then you're good to go for life. Nothing possibly bad could ever happen. Proves that doesn't work out. Because even if they didn't, if you were there first, because of the times and they see what's going on and all that, especially if they're maybe empowered types, they may, down the road, want that. So, these are the times. Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. Carl refused, which was good, and should never go along with this. It should have been over. He should have ended right then and there. 23. Whole life ahead of him. And stays with this broad that's causing him a lot of drama. <clears throat> I told my wife about the conversation, and my wife was furious. Yeah, because your wife could see through the bullshit. Not for Carl so much as she believed Anna had other reasons to talk to me about the open marriage. Women aren't stupid, guys. I know a lot of you want to think that, but they're not stupid. And she could see exactly what was really going on here. The next day, I pulled Carl off to the side and told him what had happened. He confirmed what Anna told me, but he was unsure what to do. He told me he still wanted to be married, but knew that if, I, if he did not change, she would leave him. Good. That's the best thing that ever happened to the guy. But he should be proactive, be the one ending it. I mean, how many stories have I done, guys? And you, many have watched these, where the woman brings up the open marriage, open relationship. The guy doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want some guy stuffing a sausage in his wife. But he goes along with it because he's afraid that she'll leave him. And like that, she's already got multiple dudes lined up, 
and she's uh, riding the carousel for a while. He meets some other girl, and then they click, and then she sees that he's actually happy, and then she ends real quick, and it's a big mess, and the marriage is over. Once someone's proposing it, it's done. Unless both people go into the marriage, and they're both a, a very alternative lifestyle, if you will, they're both on the same page, it's not going to work. Anyway, he said, uh, I told him the only advice I could think of at the time that he needed to make a decision and stick by it. I've always been a firm believer in right or wrong or insane, just make a decision. So that was the first thing I told him. I agree with that. Being decisive. I'm sure you probably learned that in the Marines. Being decisive is masculine energy. Being indecisive, being not being able to make up your mind and be a flake, that's more in the feminine energy. Around the one-year mark, Carl took off for a few days, and no one knew why. When I got a hold of him, he, he told me he caught Anna cheating, so he asked for a few days. He forgot his lunch one day and went home to get it. Now listen to this. He walked in the house and found his daughter crying on the couch watching TV. Already mad about his daughter, he went into the bedroom to find out what was really going on and walked right in on them getting it on. Well, it looks like she wasn't getting her open marriage, so she was taking matters into her own hands. When she jumped up to talk to him, he shoves her back on the bed, and the guy ran out, ran at him. Carl twisted the guy's arm and wrist, almost breaking them, and told the guy to run. As Carl started to grab his weapon, Anna jumped on him to stop him, but threw her off. The guy was already driving away by the time Carl got out the front door. The cops showed up a little while later, and Carl had to deal with it as they were called on for possible DV, domestic hurting. No arrest was made, but Carl got a lawyer to handle his divorce and the DV call. There you go. That's another thing that happens in these stories. The wife wants to open marriage. The guy says no. Nothing really happened, supposedly, and eventually she cheats. And the guy catches this. And it's funny, the guy charged Carl here, and Carl's been training in martial arts in Krav Maga for a year, trained exactly for that type of scenario when somebody charges you. Boom. He says, things got heated during the court time, but it ended pretty well. He got divorce, custody, and child support. Sweet. How often do you have it where the guy gets the full custody and he gets child support from her? Nice. Anna got pregnant during the procedure, so it took over a year to finalize. My wife and I were called on as character witnesses, so we had to sit through the whole thing. Carl also told us that Anna hated everything about my wife. Of course, because his wife is a traditional woman and feminine and traditional values, and they're happy. Meanwhile, Anna is an effinist and miserable, and look what look look at her life, right? Does this whole th does this sound like uh, these effinist ideas on relation to marriage are very much of a good idea? Does it sound like they work? No. How do I know? Because look what we have around us nowadays. <clears throat> In Anna's eyes, my wife did not deserve to have the stable life I built for us. I was so confused at the time, at, at, at the time as if I thought they were just starting out their lives rather than already. Let me read that again. He, he, this thing, the writing was a little off. He says, uh, "I was so confused at the time as I had thought they were just starting our lives rather than having already built anything." Ironically, the father of the new child wanted Anna to be a stay-at-home mom with no friends outside his own circle. Isn't that interesting. Last I heard, they moved outside the court-pointed area, but Carl decided to let it go as long as he still got his child support. Thank you for your time, and God bless. So, traditional marriage with a feminine woman, tr traditional feminine, or the marriage with the uh, empowered effinist. Which one worked out? The traditional one. And no surprise, the open marriage thing caused the whole thing to cave. But fortunately in this story, unlike a lot of other ones, the guy came out on top. Hey, he was really young. He now has a chance for a, a clean slate. He got custody of the of the kids. He's getting child support. Nice. Usually it's the other way around, so it's a good one to hear. But anyhow, guys, this video is a little different than, than I was taught. I, I normally do because usually the guys that write in are in these miserable, awful, awful relationships and marriages. This guy's actually happy. So to the guy who wrote this, you know, I'm really glad for you. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. It's working. I'm really happy for you. You know, it's rare, but awesome. And I don't think you think this was a bad situation for your friend because, believe me, you you helped him. You really did. And he's doing, and he got away from that woman. But imagine being married to her for all those years. And if he caved and let her have the open relationship with, when well, he was there just 
hanging back, which a lot of guys do. So you did him a, a big favor. So, and I, I'm curious if you guys, you guys are friends or still know each other. It'd be interesting. But anyway, guys, traditional marriage, traditional old fashioned. Uh, I can't think of the words. Been a long day. Basically, the old traditional marriage, the new modern empowered marriage. Which one's going to work? The old school one. But anyway. That is it for today, guys. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.